what a wonderful little girl you have that can sit through all that music all this all this time. So thank you for that. Wow, amazing grace. And, and today I want to really talk about what grace means to us. What relevance does it have in our life? Um, I picked that song because I thought it was interesting that that song was written by a slave trader who was on a, a, a ship in 1773. And um, he had a, a spiritual experience during a tornado that they were having. And he saw the light. It's, he, he talks about in his song about the energy that happened when he was on that ship and the tornado was, was coming towards him. And this incredible field of beauty and light saved him and brought him back to his heart. And I want to talk about that a little bit, about what that kind of energy, grace, means in each of our lives. Sometimes it, it, we don't know what it means. You know, we hear it all the time, the word grace, and it's like some people are grace and some aren't. And when I was a little girl, I used to think about it way different. My church taught me um, way different than I believe it is today. So that's kind of what I want to talk about, because I think it is one of the most profound and beautiful words that we have today is this grace, it's, it's, it's amazing. We are each created in the energy of grace. There isn't anybody here that has any more grace than anybody else. Grace is the energy of God in the world that moves up our souls forward, right? It's the energy that, that evolves us, that makes us better, that brings us to the wholeness and the love that we already are. See, we already are not born. We have to remember we aren't born in sin. We're born in blessing. We're born in love. And this grace is the energy that makes us realize that. And the best thing about it is that we don't have to earn it. There's no merit. There's nothing that you have to do. You already have it. You have this incredible, incredible grace. It's like everything in the universe does. It's the acorn that turns into an oak tree. It's the grace, the energy that turns this acorn into an oak, that turns the bud into a blossom. And yet, we struggle so hard in life when grace it is that carries us forward, but we struggle with everything in life. Rumi, who I love, my, my favorite Sufi mystic, says in his post poetry that we are so weak, and if we give up to grace, that just like the ocean takes care of each wave, until it reaches the shore. I love that. So think about grace in your life where you just fall back and you can imagine that there's an energy that supports and loves you and gets you through whatever you are going through in your life. See, that's what grace is to me. I love the scenario of the ocean and the wave. It's pretty profound. It's about the ocean taking care of each wave. Doesn't demand that the wave call it by any correct name. You can call grace anything you want to. The ocean taking care of each wave does not demand that the wave believe anything about the ocean. We don't have to believe anything to have grace in our life. Such is grace. When we open to it, though, we got to remember we have to open to it. It's like a, a wave that breaks open our, our darkness. And it says, wow, you're going to be okay. No matter what you're going to go through, you're going to be okay. You don't need to try to do better. You don't need to try to do anything right now. You just need to rest in this power of grace. You don't need to seek anything, perform anything. You don't need to intend anything. It's almost like grace says, I've got your back. I've got your back. You just have to breathe into it and know that you are supported and connected by something incredibly powerful. Call it whatever you want. You can call it God. You can call it the universe. You can call it love. That's my favorite. Love is grace. And I, I've told the story a million times here, but you have to hear it again because it works so well with grace in my life. When I was going through some, boy, some crazy stuff, and I was reminded this week, I went through like a, a, at the same time, kind of this bankruptcy. I was going through my husband dying. I was going through the illness. He was kind of dying, kind of not dying. He was sick. Um, I was having ch child problems with my um, teenagers. It was a time of just incredible um, 
pain for me, struggle. And I can remember laying in bed one night going, oh my God, you know, I, I, and I just started a new job, and I'm going, I, I can't even imagine getting through this. And I, I have described it before as an icicle in my body, where I laid in bed and I just felt like it was so stiff and cold, and like, how can I go on? I can't move. And finally, there just, it was like there was so much worry going on in your head. Have you ever played it in your head over and over and over again? Everything, what's going to happen to me? What's, you know, I don't understand this. What's happening? And all of a sudden, it's just like I put up my hand and said, help, you know. I don't know, you know, who I was saying even help to. I just went, God, you know, help me. And I remember feeling an energy move through me, and it was like a cradle thing almost, like, you know, okay, I got you. I've got you, and I, that's how I can describe it, it's like a cradling. And I got up the next day and I felt better. Now I'll tell you, it didn't stay, right? I still kind of went through this, but I knew there was this energy, it, it was available to me. There was this peace available to me no matter what was going on in my life. So later on, as I, you know, kind of went on with my life, I, I started to study and read and, and learn a lot more than I did back then. Um, the 19th century Indian mystic Ramakrishna, you've heard of Ramakrishna, his quote says, the winds of grace are always blowing, but it's up for us to raise our sails. That night, I think I raised my sails, if you know what I mean. It's finally like you're struggling against the wind and you raise your sails and you say, help, surrender, acceptance, whatever it is. That's, those are huge words, you guys. Acceptance and surrender. When you're struggling so hard in your life, that's what help is. So I think I raised my sails. That's our job to do. And when you do that, the grace is energy, and energy shifts, right, in your body. You're made of energy. That's what you are. You're very little solid and a lot of energy. And the energy shifts when you make, when you give up, basically. When you say, I can't do it, help me. There's something bigger than me gonna move me through the pain that I'm going through. It changes your body. It helps you relax, helps you breathe. It gives you courage. This grace gives you courage to move forward. And I know with all my heart that love is grace and it prevails every time, no matter what you're going through. So even though you may feel afraid, there is so much love in you that will get you through. Give up to grace is what Rama Krishna says. And boy, I believe that with all my heart that there is this steady presence of love around us that we block, right? And it's there during our most glorious times. We actually see it then, but it's there in our darkest nights. It's there when you're lonely. It's there when you're sick. It's there when you don't know what to do. Grace is a guiding light when everything else seems lost. It's also an inspiration that comes just in the nick of time. Grace is knowing that while we're not always as good as that we can be, that there is this gentle, this unstoppable force in us that beckons us to be better people than we are. It comes to us from nature, right? This grace comes to it. Sometimes you can look at a flower and go, oh my God, this is so beautiful. A horse, I saw it's a beautiful horse. Dawn, I was thinking of you when I saw this horse. And I'm thinking that was grace, just this incredible horse that was dancing. Um, it can be any, it can come in the, the form of a person in your life. During that time in my life, I was sent Judy and a lot of other people, but specifically Judy, who was the main character of grace in my life. And she moved my life forward. She moved my soul forward. I was, as I'm writing this, I was crying and I went, oh my God, you know, and I, not, you know, I, I won't you know, talk about Judy, 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 you know, but I have to say, you know, that I called her or I texted her and I said, oh my God, do you realize, you know, how much you saved my life? And she said, do you know how much you saved mine? And so, it, and I went, oh wow, you know, this is what grace does. It creates so much um, incredible love between each other, between us and the universe. It comes in so many ways, this grace in your life. And you can think of how it's come in yours. You just have to be open to it. You have to remember where it came from, right? You have to remember that. It's in the Course in Miracles, they say we rest in God. That's the same thing. Resting in grace, resting in God. 
leaning back and just knowing that you are taken care of. It's the arms of grace are in us every single moment of our life. So however you're feeling right now, if you're feeling kind of blah, you know, if you're feeling not too perky, somebody said to me today, I don't feel too perky today. And I said, you don't have to feel perky, but, but when you get in here, hopefully you'll leave and you'll feel a little bit of inspiration and remember that you have something inside of you that can make you feel how you want to feel if you open, if you raise your arms to grace. What that means is just open yourself, you know, just be there. You know, surrender and accept what's going on in your life Tell you it can't accept anymore and feel the arms of grace around you. Ralph Waldo Emerson, one of my favorite writers, him and Thoreau, oh my God, I love them. And he called this grace a natural experience. He said, we all have it. We all have it. He studied Hinduism and all the Eastern mystics. And he said that grace is simply a state of oneness, knowing that we're connected to each other and everything in the universe. You know, there's not an us and a them. It's all one thing. And we're all manifested out differently, but underneath, we're connected. And he called it the oversoul. He called that the oversoul. I love that. He said that all we have to do is center ourselves deeply in this oneness. That's all we have to do, all right? Just center yourself deeply in the oneness. What does that mean? Well, it just means that we get quiet. We get quiet. Hopefully a little bit of the service today was about getting quiet enough where your mind, all this chatter can kind of let go and there's nothing there but the power of the words of I am. Because you are. Does that make sense? Things ultimately work out. That's what I know in your life. Whatever you're worried about today, you probably won't worry about it tomorrow. And if you do, it'll slowly fade until something else comes. Right? That's kind of the way life is, you know? Does it mean that if we pay attention to grace and we surrender that we're not going to suffer? No, we're still going to do that. But I'll tell you what, it'll ease it up. When I've gone through suffering after that night, I had the ice cream in me. I knew that I could be better again. And I've gone through some other stuff since then. But boy, I knew I'd get through it. I knew that there's something incredibly powerful within me, within you. I knew there would be people sent to help me. I knew there would be nature outside for me to sit in. You know, everywhere, there's stuff for us to, to help us get through. The 20th century theologian Paul Tillich, he defines sin. Here's what he said about sin. Is sin is separation, right? Separation from your truest, your deepest self. It's separation from others and community. It's separation from God. That's what sin is. When we don't feel like we're connected, that's what sin is. It's not doing bad things, right? But he said that grace is sin's opposite. So if sin is separation, grace is reconnection, right? Grace is reconnection. That's the opposite. It reconnects us, removes the separation, and gets us back on target, back in the flow of life. And when I say flow, I'm talking about the Tao. You guys know what the Tao is? The Tao is the, the, um, the, the, the flow of life, it's called. Um, it's Lao Tzu, if you've ever heard, we've talked about Lao Tzu before. And it's a whole body of work called the Tao. And it's about the flow of life, about going with the wind, you know, bending. It's about strength and bending. And that's what he said, that, that um, the flow is like the Tao. So our job then is to help each other. Right? To overcome the separation because all of us feel separate. All of us feel separate at times. We all go through this, this time when we are disconnected from God. We're disconnected from community. We're disconnected from life. Our job here on, on earth, that's why you were born, is to reconnect yourself with that energy of grace, with the energy of love, and then help each other. Help each other through that. And then in turn, we help our world. We change our world by tapping into our own grace. So I opened up with a poem by Ruby that said, the ocean takes care of us each wave until it reaches shore. So I'm gonna close with the end of that um, poem by Ruby. He says, when we open up to grace, something opens our wings. Something makes boredom and hurt disappear. Something fills the cup in front of us where we taste only sacredness. I love that. 
we taste only sacredness. And that's my prayer for each and every one of us is that, that we taste sacredness, that we open our hearts to the winds of grace, the grace of being human. Thank you.